All right, in this video, we're going to be looking at Unit 2, 2.5 proteins and nucleic acids, just like we did with carbohydrates and lipids. This time, we're going to look at proteins and the nucleic acids. Let's do it. So proteins first. This is typically what we think about when we think of proteins, like things like fish and chicken and whatever else, some kind of cheese there and shrimps. But this is, I mean, this is protein. These things are made out of protein. But protein's a little more technical than that. Let's talk about protein. Protein's made up of this monomer called an amino acid. Amino acids always look like this. Uh, we're not going to talk about all of those constituent parts, but this is an amino acid. And one thing I will say about the amino acid is amino acids have this R group on them, and the R group is the variable group of an amino acid. This causes amino acids to be different it causes the uh, different amino acids that are found in human body to be different from one another and that's the monomer the polymer is oftentimes called a polypeptide which is just a fancy word for a protein and so you could say that the protein is also just a polymer of protein as well those two terms are used interchangeably the reason it's called a polypeptide is because the bond between two amino acids is called a peptide bond don't forget when two monomers join together, water's pulled out. That's called dehydration synthesis. And when you want to split those two monomers apart, you need water. That's called hydrolysis. Don't forget that. That's pretty important. Uh, here are the six functions of proteins. We could probably name some more, but we're going to stick with these. I'm um, just going to kind of talk about them briefly. Um, structural component, meaning that they actually are used to build things like muscle, skin, hair, and other. They're used for signaling, like uh, insulin. Um, is an example. Uh, human growth hormone is an example. There's so many examples of proteins in the body that are used for signaling. This is the idea of communication between cells. Uh, they're used as catalysts, uh, which is an enzyme. A biological catalyst is called an enzyme. We're going to have a whole section about enzymes in 2.6. Uh, for immunity, things like antibodies are important for uh, our immunity, and antibodies are proteins. Uh, poisons, we don't produce any of those, but venom and other poisons are protein and then transport across the membrane there are transport proteins that will do that work which we will spend a lot of time talking about in unit three three yeah that's right let's talk a little bit about protein structure big thing with protein structure is the structure of a protein determines its function we're not going to talk about all of these separate little parts here the primary secondary tertiary none of that stuff that you see on the slide there Though it is pretty interesting, I'll usually demonstrate this in class using um, a pipe cleaner and kind of show how the, the protein kind of folds up and makes this three-dimensional structure, and that three-dimensional structure will determine its function, just like any tool that we use. Um, the big thing with protein structure is that its st uh, structure determines its function. And lastly is this idea of denaturation. Denaturation is when a protein loses its structure due to one of a couple of things. Um, there's several things that can cause a protein to denature, but for our purposes, uh, proteins exposed to heat can cause the protein to denature. And so what does that mean? Well, you can see it there. The, the one on the left, that folded up protein has a particular shape. That shape determines its function. Well, if that protein denatures or becomes not like itself, that means that it kind of unfolds and it's not useful for anything. It's like if you take a pair of scissors apart, you can't use them anymore. Those pair of scissors is denatured. And so a protein can become denatured when it's exposed to heat. Um, it can become denatured when it's exposed to pH uh, extremes. So like a high pH, which would be like a basic pH, or a low pH, which would be like an acidic pH. Either one of those will cause proteins to denature. And when they denature, they no longer function because, again, the shape of a protein determines its function. So next, let's talk about nucleic acids. The two nucleic acids that we'll talk about in this class are RNA and DNA. Uh, both of those are named according to the fact that they're nucleic acids, what the NA stands for. The D and the R stand for the sugar, which we're going to get to in a second. So there are three parts of a nucleotide. And all nucleotides, whether we're talking about DNA or RNA, all of them are going to have these three parts. The first part is a phosphate group. That phosphate group is just a phosphorus with, surrounded by oxygens. 
You don't need to know that. You just need to know phosphate group, and we'll be happy. But I will say for later, go ahead and put this in your back pocket. Notice how that phosphate is really negative. It's got a lot of negative charges. It's going to be useful later. We're going to talk about it later, though. Uh, the pentose sugar, pentose sugar is a fancy way of saying a five-carbon sugar. And so um, the second part of a nucleotide is a five-carbon sugar. And a, a nucleotide is what makes up nucleic acids. I don't know if I said that. So if you didn't get that down, nucleotide is the monomer of nucleic acids made up of a phosphate, a pentose sugar or a five-carbon sugar, and a nitrogenous base. Nitrogenous base, these are the... Um, parts like the A's, T's, C's, and G's that you're familiar with, with DNA that are interchangeable or not interchangeable, but that are um, complementary to one another, A and T and C and G. But we'll talk more about that when we get to our genetics unit. The sugar of the uh, nucleic acid uh, for RNA, it is called ribose. This is, uh, hence its name, ribonucleic acid. And for DNA, it's called deoxyribose for deoxyribonucleic acid. And um, these two sugars are the five-carbon sugar that's found in each nucleotide. And as far as a polymer is concerned, the nucleic acid is a polymer itself. It is composed of millions and millions of individual nucleotides. I think DNA, like the human genome, is composed of like six billion base pairs or something crazy, like or maybe three billion base pairs, six billion total nucleotides at some astronomical kind of number. And so uh, when we're saying polymer, we're saying a really big molecule and lastly is the function of nucleic acids the function of nucleic acids is to store hereditary information this hereditary information is going to code for proteins and so um, we talked about proteins just now we said the shape of a protein determines its function and so proteins are pretty much doing most of the body's functions right well the instructions to make those proteins so that those functions can be carried out is found on the DNA. All those A's, T's, C's, and G's are going to be a code that makes a particular protein shape.